This is the Sigma Plant Finder product knowledge series. Today we're going to be covering bulldozers. This is a photograph of a typical D6R dozer. Um, it's got very nice paint. The undercarriage is very good condition. You can see the grousers, the grips on them are sticking up. That means that the undercarriage is very new. The chains, which are the pieces the grousers are fitted onto, are still yellow. You can see them all the way around. That means the chains are pretty new as well. Um, the blade has got a new cutting edge on it, which is that yellow piece of metal, which bolts onto the blade. You can see the bolt holes there, and that is a wearing item, so that once it wears out, you replace it. And it's obviously just been replaced. Um, over the top of the cab, you can just see it running up the right hand side of the cab, but there's a heavy uh, metal column yellow metal, which is a ROPS protection over the cab. Now that is protection if the machine rolls over then the operator is obviously protected from crushing and it's called roll over protection system or ROPS. Um, just down to the right of that you've got the fuel filler cap. Often if you see a photograph of the machine working on site it'll have a big dirty stain down below that. That's just where diesel spills when they fill it up and because it doesn't dry then just dust just sticks to that but it washes off fine we'll go on now to the back of the, the same machine um, here you see a bit more of the undercarriage um, that you can see the small drawbar sticking out from the back there that is used to pull attachments sometimes machines will have a ripper which they unbolt the um, drawbar there. This is an example of a four piston single shank ripper. So it's got single shank or tooth and it simply bolts in to the holes that are on the back of the machine which sometimes they'll have that drawbar fitted. This machine as you can see has got the ROPS as well. Undercarriage is pretty decent. This shows a different type of ripper it's again on the same size machine as the last one, still a D8, but the ripper has got three teeth. So this is called a multi shank. Um, this has been fully repainted, the machine. The first bits to go when it's been repainted are obviously the blade and the undercarriage because they are the parts that scrape on the soil. This is an alternative attachment on the rear of the machine. It's a winch and it's typically used for forestry work. Over the cab, it's got that mesh surround and then the the bars or the sweeps, as they call it, over the bonnet. That is just to protect the cab and the bonnet against branches. This is, it's got an LGP track, which is low ground pressure. I'll show you an um, example of that later on. Um, but this is a typical forestry spec and when you see this spec with a winch, the LGP, those sweeps, it means that it's been used on forestry, which is typically pretty light work for a machine. This is a slightly smaller dozer. It hasn't got the high drive. If you look back on a previous machine, you'll see that the tracks are triangular in shape. CAT use that on their D6 machines and above. This is still a D6, but it's a lighter finishing machine. Um, this machine is typically used for landscaping, for instance on golf courses or that sort of thing where they're just wanting to finish off. So the blade is much more manoeuvrable than the standard large heavy dozer blade which is used for heavy earth moving or quarry work. This has got a multi shank ripper on again, it's obviously much lighter because the machine is much smaller. At the back of the cab it's got a small bulge where it's black, you'll be able to see it. And that houses the air conditioning unit. If you see one of those it means that the machine has got air conditioning. Mostly machines these days do have aircon but it's a useful thing to notice. Um, on this machine as well you'll be able to see that the rams instead of going vertically up the front of the grille like the D6R or the D8R they run horizontally down by the side of the tracks. This is because it is a six-way blade which tilts and um, is much more variable 
than the blade on a on one of the R series. As you can see here, this is a D6R. It's got the vertical rams. This is a straight blade, but it's not a six-way blade. A six-way blade does not have the pusher arms going to the outside of the undercarriage, like you can see here. The pusher arms and the pusher frame is the connection between the blade and the machine. Now, these this is an example of an LGP machine. It's got wide track plates. If you want to see the different components of an undercarriage, check the undercarriage video. And here is an example, same machine, same angle, but it's just a standard track machine as opposed to an LGP. You'll notice on the LGP the track plates stick out beyond the side of the machine. It just spreads the machine weight over a large area, it means it doesn't sink in, you can use it on softer soil without causing so much damage. Now this is the blade on a D8R. It's got a single single crank at the end of the blade, each end, which means it's a semi-U blade. It's used for heavy duty um, quarry work, stone shifting, that sort of thing. This is a U blade, which has got a much larger crank on each end. This is used mainly on D9s, D10s for moving large amounts of soil or rock over a long distance for instance where they are clearing the overburden on a quarry overburden is the soil and rock which sits on top of the rock or mineral that they're wanting to extract they just need to move it out of the way so they use a u-blade and that helps them transport all that soil out of the way over long distances this is a straight blade it's a six-way blade you can see the hydraulic rams there running down by the side of the tracks it's got LGP tracks if you look you'll notice the join two-thirds of the way along the blade that is because the blade itself is too wide for European transport so where where that join is it just pivots by 90 degrees and makes the track the blade sorry um, narrow enough to put on a truck this is a D8R the blade and rams have been taken off to make it smaller for shipping. That's a good idea, especially on expensive shipping routes. Um, this one is another DA tire, it's got a ripper, it's got the SU blade. It has got an open canopy. You can see the, the um, thick supports for the canopy at the rear. They are, that means that the canopy is rops, which is good. They generally use open canopies like this only where the climate is warm enough so the operators don't get frozen. Now this is a close-up of one part of the undercarriage. It might be useful to you to note this is a picture of the, the sprocket which gives the drive to the entire undercarriage. Now this is a new sprocket because the edges of the teeth are they're square when they wear they go pointed like this this is worn out it needs to be replaced pretty soon these teeth are going to start snapping off and but it's not a big job to replace them you just unbolt the segment you can see the joint of the segment there you just unbolt one segment put a new one on drive it forward for maybe two feet so that the next segment is um, accessible you just unbolt that and bolt the next one on you don't even need to take the track off or anything this is a picture of the inside of the cab there's only a single seat in a dozer doors make it accessible from both sides um, good visibility but mainly at the side the high cab the high bonnet on cap dozers means that visibility is not great but it gives you enough to see um, and that is all. It's only we've only covered cap dozers in here. There are different manufacturers of dozers. Kamatsu, Fiat Itachi um, are the two main brands of dozers. Interestingly, Volvo do not make a dozer. Neither do Dusan or a lot of the other heavy equipment manufacturers. It's mainly just Cat and Kamatsu. Thanks for listening. <laughs>